At present, the world is a very dangerous place, and there is a serious risk that it could escalate further beyond the regional dispute that we see in the Middle East. I know people may say, well, it was a dangerous place 50 years ago or 100 years ago or further away. But in fact, when you look at what's happening now, there seems to be an inability on the part of people to recognise that we have to share the planet together. And also what has had a significant impact and differentiates this dispute and current disputes from historic disputes is we now have vast and immediate communication. Every person is aware fairly immediately of outrages that have taken place in certain parts of the world. Previously, these were regional disputes that, disputes that remained in the regions and didn't spread with such alarm around the world. I think, in part, that's the reason why there was so much outrage at the massacre that was perpetrated by Hamas on the people of southern Israel on the 7th of October last. That was a massacre that was not done in the name of the Palestinian people. In fact, it was very damaging to the cause and the interests of the Palestinian people. And I was pleased to hear the uh, president of the Palestinian Authority, Abbas, confirm that Hamas did not represent Palestinian people or the Palestinian cause. We also must recognise, however, that the reason for the outrage that is spreading is also because everyone can see the excessive response that Israel is perpetrating upon the innocent people who are living in Gaza. We can see, and the world can see, that the excessive response by blocking off food and electricity and water is a breach of international humanitarian law. It is a breach of what people recognise as being right. And although Israel may say it's not their intention to target civilians, by bombing an area of that density, the effect of your actions is that civilians are going to be bombed and severely injured and killed. This ultimately is a political problem that requires a political solution. There are extremes that will never be satisfied. Hamas will never be satisfied in terms of a political solution. But as politicians in Ireland, we have to inform leaders around the world that the only way this problem is going to be resolved is through a political resolution. Unfortunately, one way of ensuring that we don't get a political resolution is if in the world we decide we're going to divide ourselves into teams. We'll have the Israeli team, we'll have the Palestinian team. Listen, if one thing Ireland can do is that we can bring a balanced approach to this and we can use and exercise our faculties into recognising what needs to be the solution. We need brave politicians to manifest themselves and to appear in Palestine and in Israel. We all know in this House what a brave politician is. A brave politician is a politician who says something that they know is right, but it's not supported by the people who support them. And we've had brave politicians in Ireland in the past. And it's extremely difficult, and it's much more difficult out in the Middle East. But there's a requirement that we get politicians in Palestine, in Israel, and around the world to recognise that there is a greater peace that can be achieved through resolution and through settlement. In the short term, we need, as other people in this House have stated, we need a humanitarian ceasefire. We need all hostages to be released. We need Israel to ensure that food and water and electricity gets back into Gaza. And once we do those short-term preliminary measures, there's then an obligation on global powers and regional powers to ensure that the peoples in those countries and their political leaders recognise that this problem is never going to be resolved unless there is a political system that the majority of people buy into. You're never going to get the extremes. And the political solution has to be a two-state solution. Mm -hmm.